welcome everybody to my empath webinar. So how to turn your empath abilities from a curse into a superpower. So I'm Pixie Rose for anybody who hasn't worked with me or seen any of my Zoom calls before. And my business is Pixie Steps. I'm a psychic and medium and a incarnated fairy. And I do intuitive work within yeah these psychic readings i'm also a level two quantum healing hypnosis practitioner and percentage of the work that i do is utilizing my empathic abilities so i'm just going to share my screen here there we go So I believe it is so important to utilize these gifts because you have been given them for a reason. You block out these, these abilities and numb yourself, but are you truly living if you're not feeling? You can start truly living an authentic life, fully encom encompassing all parts of yourself. I use these gifts not only to do my professional readings, but also to have better relationships with the people in my life. And it is because I can tune into people's true selves. And they don't, they know it's safe to be who they who they are. They don't need to hide from me and, and I don't need to hide from them. We can be exactly as we are and exactly as we are not. All emotions are welcomed, not just the easy ones. Also, what I'll be sharing with you today is around spiritual wellness. It is important for all of humanity to take responsibility for their own energy. So all of us individually taking responsibility for our own energy. And look after that energy. So it is just as important as looking after your health. And when you do this, you will notice a direct impact on your physical health because all, all health issues stem from emotional problems. So I don't want to hear from anyone after they've done this webinar that, you know, the, the typical empath excuses, I can't do whatever it is, ra -da -da -da, because I'm an empath. We don't need to use that excuse anymore. So there is a very distinct difference between being an empath versus being empathic. So when we are empathic towards someone else, we are able to relate to a person's feelings as if they were our own. But we, when we are an empath, we feel those feelings as if they are our own. So it's not just relating it is fully experiencing and embodying the other person and their emotions. I believe being an empath is a superpower. And like all super beings, once we, once we have this gift activated within ourselves, we do need a little help understanding these gifts. So the problem with being an empath is understanding when the feelings that the, when the feelings we are experiencing are our own or when they're someone else's. This is the first trick, you know, when you're, when you're waking up to these abilities. And it can be really tricky, and especially if you're not fully aware of yourself. We all need to deeply reflect on who we are and how we feel and knowing our own triggers and our own feelings and responses to things. So you may have been born an empath or this empath ability may have been activated within you. So for some people, waking up to this empath ability may be tricky because it's something that they've always known and they haven't felt any different. And I've definitely spoken to people and had conversations around, oh, yep, so you're an empath, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, isn't everybody? But it's very, very different. But for some people that it's just always the way that they've been. So it's a bit tricky. 
So people don't realize that other people can't tune into other people the way that you can. So this is not a gift that everybody has. Maybe one day, I do believe that the children coming through, they're probably all going to be naturally empathic and intuitive, but anyone born after 1990 or <laughs> maybe not so much. And for other people, suddenly you just have all this like access to all these extra emotions and you have no idea where they came from or what to do with it. So this can be similar to say in a movie when you know those movies when the person suddenly has like telepathic abilities or is able to hear everybody's thoughts that's what it feels like when when this empath ability is is activated within you it's it can be quite like overwhelming and confronting so when this when this empath ability is activated in you. So for me, I do feel like I may have always had this gift because when I was working in mental health, I just I just seemed to know things about the clients that I was working with without them having to tell me. I felt like I sort of knew their whole story and also what they needed as well. Like they didn't necessarily need to do all the hard work and tell me what they needed. But then it's like I've, I may have been born with it, but then it like activated on, on a next level. So this was after I had my son and I experienced a transformation of the mother. And at the same time, I cut out dairy from my diet. And this seemed to also release any, any blockages that may, may have been there for me. And it was just on like supercharge. <laughs> so... It was quite a full-on experience for me when I had this empath activation. And this may be what some of you have been going through in the last couple of months, because I do believe that throughout this Great Awakening 2020 and all the stuff that we've all gone through this year, we've had another level of empaths activated just recently. So when this gift is unlocked to you or activated, it can look very messy it is a massive spiritual awakening, which more or less you kind of look like you're going crazy. So it's it's also another you know bit of feedback that I receive from people when when they learn that they may be an empath, they say, "Oh my god, I thought I was going crazy." It's like, no, you're not going crazy. You're just feeling everyone else's emotions, and that's intense. So it can it can even look like mental health issues for some people, and for me it definitely looked like I was going crazy. So people in my life were talking to me about postnatal depression and all sorts of things like that, but it wasn't postnatal depression for me. It was this, this empath ability. And I had no idea that I was feeling everyone else's feelings and I had no idea what to do with it. So it wasn't actually until I started seeing a holistic counsellor that, well, she, she actually told me that she believed that I was an empath. Sometimes we have to be told. <laughs> and, and it just sort of clicked in and made sense. Like I'd heard of empaths before, but hadn't really felt like that was me just because I guess I didn't have any of those problems that a lot of empaths do with not being able to socialise too much or anything like that. But then once this activation happened, I really struggled to be around people. And I would just experience so many intense emotions and just had no idea where they were coming from. So after I learned that I could potentially be an empath, I did some research on this. So this was about five years ago. So there was a little bit of information out there, but definitely not as much as there is today. And there also just wasn't a clear way of what to do with it. So it's like, okay, now I know I'm an empath, but now what do I do with it? Like, how do I stop feeling crazy? So one, one story that I can share throughout this was when I, uh, I was having dinner with my my ex-in-law's family. So it was just a typical sort of family dinner. 
and everyone was fine chatting and eating like I'm there feeding my son and then all of a sudden I just got this intense feeling of rage and and it was so real for me that I just like suddenly got up and started gathering my things and just left in a big huff like something horrible had happened. Whereas the reality was that nothing actually happened. Um, it wasn't until I sort of got home and I was like, oh, that wasn't my rage. But I felt it so, you know, so fully. So signs that you may be an empath if you're here today and you're not quite sure still is you know when someone is lying to you. So you are like a human lie detector. And I think this is a true blessing. And one of, you know, if this reason alone doesn't make you want to stop numbing that empath ability, you can just catch a lie out of, you know, just so easily because you can feel internally what's happening there. So you're very sensitive to emotions. You might get very emotional very easily. So as I mentioned that story there where I was just full of rage, even times where I'm in like, like a big concert or, you know, surrounded by a lot of people, you know, that huge amount of, of people is very overwhelming. And especially if something like a sensitive topic comes up, you know, so I'd just be this random person in a crowd crying <laughs> because of all the emotions. So you may struggle holding eye contact with people. So for me, I had that my whole life. I was very uncomfortable about looking at people in the eyes. So, so you, can, you can feel this empathic ability just by feeling. But when you look at someone in, in their eyes, you know, they say that the eyes are the window to the soul. So you can just see them like fully, fully. And especially if they may have you know, some not great, like not a great history, some things that you might not want to know about them. You look at them in the eyes and you can just see it all. It's super intense, but I'm a lot better now at looking at people in the eyes. You don't understand your feelings. So those examples that I used of situations, even like when you're just walking down the street and suddenly you just, you know, you might be happy and then suddenly you're just in a bad mood, you know, that's, you've picked up someone else's crap. <laughs> You feel drained, especially when being around other people. So this is all this information is for the untrained empath. So when you learn how to protect your energy, then you won't feel those those drained feelings. Narcissistic people or energy vampires are especially drawn to you. So random people will tell you like your tell you their life story. So this is when you're at the supermarket and you say, oh, hi, how are you? And then they just like tell you all this stuff. <laughs> you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> so you don't recognize your own energy the way that you should. So it just energy can get a bit mixed up. I also wanted to tell a little story about, so, oh no, here it is. Okay, I'm making sure I'm not skipping anything. I'm like, I want to tell this story. So, so when you realize that you have this ability, clearing and protecting your energy becomes even more important. So this is something that we need to learn how to do. It's, it's not generally a natural instinct that we have. So as an empath, we take on other people's energy and it will stay with us until we actively cleanse ourselves. So not long after I had the experience of being told that I was an empath from my counsellor, I went to a local psychic expo and got a psychic reading. And what happened was she was using her Tibetan singing bowl. Um, I don't know if you know what that is, but it's, it's a clearing tool. Okay, so she was using that to clear the energy. So after she did um, a reading, she would clear the energy ready for the next reading. And when I sat down, she was having a very hard time clearing the energy because so she actually told me that um, that I was an empath and that I was soaking in everyone else's energy like a sponge. So that's what we do. And especially when we, 
when we learn that we're an empath, it's like almost doubled that as well. It's like, oh, wow, I can, I can feel other people's feelings as if they were my own. And I was just soaking in everyone else's energy. So I was pretty much carrying around everyone who was at that expo. So a hundred or more people, I was carrying all of their energy, all of their emotions, all of their baggage and stuff just around with me. So you can imagine how tiring that would be. So she told me that I needed to learn how to protect myself. So one thing that, and we'll get more into protecting an yourself and your energy but she said amethyst crystal is very good for empaths so I needed to get myself some amethyst and just have that around me and protect my energy and yeah you can you can imagine why I looked crazy as well like you know carrying all those people's energy around with me and feeling all their their emotions so when you're protecting your energy, you will ensure that you don't lose your sense of self anymore. So a good tip, which it took me months to learn this. So after I started playing around with feeling people, you know, reading people in that empath way, I thought that I had to not protect myself in order to do that. I thought that protecting myself put a block against being able to read other people but that's not the case. So you can keep your energy protected and still be able to utilize that gift. It just means that you won't lose your sense of self. So I, I believe that there is a way to switch on your abilities and switch them off. And especially when you are doing intuitive work, so, so this is something that we all need to individually play with is what is it for you that switches it on for you and how do you switch it off? And generally when I do my, my clearing at the end of the day, that's when I'm sort of switching myself off to that because this is energy work and like anything, you, you know, you're going to get tired if you're working all the time. So the switching on process and switching off can be as simple or as elaborate as you want. The way that I tune in is through meditation. So first I clear my own energy so that I'm not getting intuitive messages for myself when I do my readings and I'm accessing them. And, and I do this by using my Tibetan singing bowl, as I mentioned before. And then in meditation, I clear my energy in, in meditation. So usually you can do this by going into a pool of water or underneath a waterfall or something like that. And then after I've cleared my energy, I ground my energy and then I protect my energy before I open myself up to using that empath gift. So there are many ways that you can do this. So I tune, like turn on my abilities. So the, the most important thing is intention. So even if you just simply sit there going in with that intention to, to switch it on. And this is why we go through so in the course that I'm running next week, we go through um, mindfulness and meditation at the very start of the course to teach you how to get into that space because you can't really have a clear intention when it's all mixed up with, with everything else from your day-to-day -day life. So other things that you can do, especially if you need a bit of help tuning in, is wearing or holding crystals like azurite or amethyst. So you can do specific guided meditation. So, so this tuning in process, this is when you might want to do energy work or when you might want to read people. So say, for example, you know, if you're, you're wanting to buy a new car, okay, and you want to like go and see if the person who's selling you the car is trustworthy. You want to switch it all on so you're prepared. You got that human lie, de lie detector on. So you can do that through doing a meditation, like a third eye meditation 
or Akashic records, or even just meditating in silence with that intention. You can do it by lighting a candle or incense, by burning Palo Santo or using essential oils. I love using a blend by doTERRA called Intune. You might like to put some music on to help you get into that vibe, you know, like doing a goddess dance meditation or something like that, calling in your guides to help you. You may cast a spell if you're if you're going down that path of, of Wicca or witchcraft. You may work with an archangel um, and calling in Archangel Michael for that protection while you're switched on. You may even want to have a nice Epsom salt bath or something like that. So the the way that you clear yourself, ground yourself, protect yourself, the way that you switch on and off is going to be different for everybody. So that's why a lot of this process in learning how to be like the trained empath, as I put it, is really learning who you are and what works for you. So once I'm finished doing my psychic or empath readings for the day I would generally have a cleansing shower so that's how I switch off is under the shower I just stand there in like a meditation type state and I imagine the water turning into like a gold light and just washing away anything that no longer serves me I release any other people's energy Anything that doesn't belong to me, I resend that back to where it came from and I call back my own energy from the day. And anything that is no longer needed washes down into the drain and into Mother Earth to be recycled. And also using that intention, it's literally like a little switch for me. I'm just like, yep, switching the light off. We're shutting down for the night. So how do I use my empath gifts? So as I mentioned before, this isn't just for people that might want to do intuitive work. This is stuff that you can really, really utilize in your day-to-day life within your relationships. And there's many, many benefits. And there's a purpose to why you have this gift, okay? But for me, I, I use it mainly in my readings, So I clear ground and protect myself before I start using these gifts. Otherwise, I do, yeah, take on their energy. And that can be, yeah, especially if you get a message from somebody and, you know, they're going through a hard time, you can just completely take that on and then your day's out after that. So if I'm with a person and I'm using that gift in person, I connect with them energetically. So I have my switch on. And I consciously read their energy and their energetic signature and I tune into their emotions. So while I'm feeling their emotions, I'm able to do like sort of like reading between the lines, right? So I feel an emotion and I can kind of read between the lines to what it may be about. So I've often described this gift as almost knowing what they're thinking about. So in this instance, that's why I I do call this a superpower because it feels like I can read minds. And, And I do believe that when you continue to work on this gift, you being an empath is a gateway to unlocking those telepathic abilities. And this is something that we're all moving towards if you haven't heard of, you know, moving to 5D or moving to the new earth. That's what that's all about is we're all going to have those abilities. So when I'm not with a person, the way that I do my readings online is I use the energy from their name. So even even if it's a Facebook name or something like that, I just write down their name and I, I just feel into the energy from their name. So what will come through to me, for for me, this empath ability is a a full-bodied experience. So it's not just feeling internal emotions. I can also feel physical issues within the body as well. So as I mentioned, when you are finished for the day, doing whatever it is that you're doing, using your empathic gifts or 
or intuitive gifts or whatever it is that you want to use for the day, you need to make sure that you switch these abilities off before you go to bed. Or even you can switch these abilities off if you just simply don't want to use them. Say, for example, you might be visiting family or something like that. So not necessarily people that you want to pick up on all their crap. <laughs> so you can switch it off. So especially switching off before bed is important. You can use this ability throughout the night and do some lucid dreaming or astral projection or anything like that but it's not recommended to do that every single night because sleep is needed to rest So other ways that you can switch off these intuitive abilities may be burning sage, using clearing oils like purify, or doing some grounding or clearing activities. So I believe that there are different levels of being an empath. So the first level is the untrained empath. So this is someone who simply feels someone else's feelings. And this is, this is where I was at before I've spent a good couple of years learning how to, you know, really utilize this. So I was the untrained empath who had a messy life. So because I was not connected to myself. So this, the untrained empath is someone who's very reactive and, and really has no idea what they're doing and no explanation for what's happening. The second level of empath is somebody who is trained, who's a trained empath, who is clearing, grounding and protecting themselves and who knows how to switch it on and switch it off. And they know how to read other people. So this is when you can feel another person so powerfully that you see them and that you can read them. So you can see their whole life. You can really know, know them. You know if they're trustworthy. Okay, so it's, it's important to, to train yourself because that's a, that's a big thing for a lot of people. How do we know who to trust? Just simply switch that on and you will feel it. So the empath ability is very connected to that clairsentience and that, that, so that feeling that we get, that intuitive feelings, I feel this is going to happen. And also this, um, the claircognience. So it's just a sense of knowing. So when you train yourself, you know your ability and you know what you're capable of. So when you really start trusting yourself and your abilities is when you're really at that second level. So you trust what you're picking up from other people. So that second level of empath is what I would like to see every single person here be. You don't need to have a messy life. You don't need this empath ability to be a curse. You don't need to numb yourself anymore. You can train yourself so that you can completely utilize this gift because it is a gift, not a curse. Now, the third level is actually very rare. So this is when the empath can affect or manipulate a person's feelings. So I like to relate this to Mantis from Guardians of the Galaxy 2. If you haven't seen it, you should probably check those movies out because they're great. <laughs> So she, so Mantis describes herself as an empath and she says that she can feel other people's feelings, but also that she is able to make them feel a certain way if she wants to. So I do believe that there are people out there with this gift. So most of the empaths on this level are people that aren't even aware that they're doing it. So these are people that are often described as the life of the party. These are people where you might be in a social situation and it's quite dull and then they walk in and everything is great and exciting. Like the energy just completely shifts. So that's their superpower is they can, they can shift the energy of a whole entire room. So these are people that you may have in your life or you may be one of them. You may be relating to this third level of empath. And as I mentioned, I've really only met a couple. So that's really exciting if you're relating to that. 
So these are people that you can't be sad for too long when you're in their company because they just, they just lift you up. So generally this third level, they use their powers for good and they generally lift people up. Unfortunately, energy vampires are more likely to be attracted to this third level. So this is this third level is more likely to get into, you know, the, the narcissistic type, type relationships. And it's because their light is just so bright that they that the, the energy vampire just wants all that for themselves. So energy vampires are another type of empath. So technically there are four, but I don't like to include energy vampires in, in the same category as us because they are very unconscious. So I don't believe that an energy vampire is, is typically aware of what they're doing. So they're not consciously trying to drain other people, but in, in their level of involvement, they are so disconnected from source. So they just, they can't, source their own energy and that is why they drain other people so when you do encounter these people these energy vampires a great thing to do is just try to educate them on what they're doing so telling them that that you feel drained after you spend time with them so it is important for people to become aware of their and become conscious of their energy and how their energy is impacting on other people. So this is actually one of our biggest lessons in humanity and our involvement as the human race. This is also addressed in the book, The Celestian Prophecy. If anyone has read that, I definitely highly recommend that book. And it discusses the power struggles that humans experience. So this is all around that. So this is why it is important for you to take responsibility for your own energy. So it's all energy related. Like we create these power struggles into something three-dimensional or in a physical material form. But ultimately what we're doing is we are using these energy power struggles and we are draining other people so that we have more for ourselves. So these energy vampire types of people, that's what they're doing. But even be conscious of what happens energetically when you have an argument with someone or a confrontation. So becoming conscious of what, what is happening to both yours and their energy. You will notice a pulling effect in these types of confrontational situations. Also, empaths give their energy too freely. So notice when you are wanting to do something kind for someone else, are you actually giving your energy away? Are you drawing this energy from source or are you just giving it you know, from, from yourself and draining yourself? And this is why it's important to call back your energy at the end of the day. So the most important thing for all empaths to do is to create healthy boundaries with people that we have in our lives. So whether they're an energy vampire or not, we all need healthy boundaries. Even our children need healthy boundaries. So our purpose on this earth is, is to be of service for others, but we cannot be of service to others when we are not at our, our own highest ability. So we need to put ourselves first every single time so that we are able to give back to other people. Empaths also need some significant time on their own. This can be difficult when you're living with people or when you're in a relationship. So, But conversations need to be had around these boundaries on ensuring that you get your time to yourself to be in your own energy. This is so important, so imperative for our own emotional and spiritual well-being. So part of why we need this time on our own, especially in the beginning, if again, this is all new to you, if this is something that you've just started experiencing this year, you, you need to know yourself. You've changed. If this has recently awakened in you, you've changed, you've shifted, you've transformed. And it's time to really fully get to know yourself and your own energy. Get to know what is good for you, what drains you, what switches on your intuitive abilities, how to switch them off. This is all very, very important. And it's not something that is you, that you're going to learn just overnight. 
So this hour and this webinar is just to give you all the information. So I don't expect you all to be trained empaths by the end of this call, but it's definitely a good start. So you can either continue to work with me or you can do your own research and work out what works best for you because this is going to be unique to every single person. So there is no one size fits all for this. Okay, so for example, I know even someone on the call here, so I, I switch off my abilities by going into water, generally having a shower. She gets um, switched on. So that's when she's receiving all, all her information. So that's why there's no, you know, I can't just say, do this, do that, and then you'll, you'll be great. You've really, really got to work it out for yourself. So if you just give me a minute here. So... I now want to introduce you to the course that I'll be running with a few amazing people next week, starting next week. And in this course, you are going to learn, um, I'll just stop that for a second. Let me just work out how to, there we go. You should see me, I've got like all the devices happening here oh it's not working <laughs> how do I exit uh oh I was doing so great I've got like the computer the laptop and I just need to hold on maybe if I do this two seconds guys and I'm going to share the course that is is starting next week and a bit more information around all of this clearing and grounding and protecting and all of that sort of thing all the stuff that we're going to be covering in the course so one second okay i think i've got it worked out I'm so proud of myself with how clever I'm getting with all of these technical things. Oh, have I screen shared? Hold on. Maybe not quite. <laughs> Almost got there. Okay, so the course, I've, I've run this course once before and, and it's very different to what the course was previously. So what I've done is I've taken what I presented in my original course within the first week and I've expanded that out to 10 weeks, okay? So giving you a, a wonderful amount of time to really explore all the different topics being offered here. So it's called Discover Your Intuition and this course is for people that are at the beginning of their spiritual journey, people that may have been just awoken recently. So... So these are some of the topics that we're going to be covering. Week one, mindfulness. Week two, meditation. Week three, clearing your energy, grounding your energy. Week five is protecting your energy. Week six is chakras. Week seven is connecting to your higher self. Week eight is spirit guides. Week nine is working with your pendulum. And then in week 10, we will expand more on the empath abilities. So within this course, you will get a live Zoom call each week. So whether that will be presenting the information to you, just as I've done right now, or you will receive a recording of that and then have a, um, a, a Q&A session so that you can get any more information. So each topic will include some soul work. So it's kind of like your homework to kind of help you incorporate the information and, and start incorporating that into your daily life, as well as access to a private Facebook group where you'll get a chance to connect with other people. And it's been so beautiful to see the, the last course that I ran, you know, the, so many connections were made and it was just really, really special to see that. 
and and also a, a, a platform for you to share you know your own wisdom as well that week and then the week two I'll be covering meditation so I bang on about meditation all the time because I just so especially being an empath when I'm around people that don't meditate I can tell their mind feels messy and it is hard work being around people that don't meditate. So we will go through all the reasons to why that may be, but really like, yeah, meditation is just the baseline for, and especially talking around this energy work, we need meditation. Okay. There's, there's so many benefits around that. Let me just refer to my notes as well. So in this topic two, we will go through all the different ways to create a meditation practice in your everyday life. As I strongly believe that everybody needs to be meditating. And this is why we, even when you do tune into these empath gifts in a big way. So as I mentioned before, the messy mind for people that don't meditate. And it's because like, there's just so much going on for them and they're not clearing themselves. They're not conscious. In week three, we will go through clearing your energy. So as I mentioned before, there are many different ways that you can clear your energy. There's a whole list really. And it will give you a chance to experiment with what works best for you. What's the best way for you to clear your energy? Is it as simple as using your Tibetan singing bowl? Or do you need to do a specific meditation? Or do you need to go and stand out in the wind? Like there's so many different things and different ways to do this. And you need to work out what's going to work for you because doing a singing bowl, that might not work for you. You might not feel like that's cleared your energy. So the next week is grounding. So again, there's very, there's very typical ways to ground your energy. Simply earthing is something that's very important for everybody to do. So this is going outside and standing on the ground barefoot and just connecting to the earth and grounding that energy. So we will go through how to get to know yourself and this, this topic is especially important because for some people, they are very naturally grounded. And for other people like me, no, I need to ground myself every day. So for me to do this call with you, I've gotten myself nice and grounded so that I can present all the information. Otherwise, I'd be like, you know, talking about this and talking about that. and go, So, you know, those people like me. <laughs> often people feel very ungrounded just from spending time with me so I need to consciously ground my energy every day and grounding is very very important because we are we are earthlings we are you know bound by the earth and we are very tuned in with the earth and if we are disconnected from the earth then we are not able to function okay very important so you will learn how often you need to ground yourself do you need to ground yourself daily like I do sometimes a couple times a day depending on what's going on or is it just a once a week thing or are you so naturally grounded that you don't really need to think about it so then we've got protecting protecting your energy So again, this is going to feel different for everybody. So we'll explore all the different ways. So for some people, protecting might be as simple as creating an energetic bubble around themselves. And that might get them through the whole day. But for other people, they might might energetically put a bubble around themselves. And then throughout their day, that bubble just sort of slowly dissipates. For other people, they might, they might need lots of protecting, okay? They might need to call in their, their whole spiritual team, their spirit guides, and get them to protect them throughout the day. I've known one person, and he had to create this, this huge, like, crystal wall around himself to protect his energy. So you'll know, you'll learn it through this week, you know, what's your level of protection that you need? 
Topic six is chakras. So each day throughout the week during this topic, we'll go through each of the seven main chakras and we'll learn where you are at currently with your chakras, how balanced they are, or if you have some major imbalances and how to clear those imbalances. So again, this is going to look different for everybody. For me, I had constant imbalances in my root chakra and in my throat chakra and even if you heard me at the start I'm like come on throat chakra we can do this <laughs> so for me I had to really regularly balance out that root chakra and that throat chakra you might need all your chakras being rebalanced all you know regularly or you might just have the one so it's going to look different in topic seven or week seven, we'll be learning all about how to connect with your higher self. So this is a way of connecting with your intuition. So when your consciousness is able to be cleared, balanced, and, and after we've done all that mindfulness and meditation, you're going to have better access to your higher self. So this week, we will learn all like how to do that. How do you connect with your higher self? Who is your higher self? And how to start receiving that intuitive information. Then in, top, in week nine, we have working with the pendulum with Hayden. So Hayden did this last time. And this was definitely one of a favorite topics of the people that did the course with me last time. A lot of us go out to these beautiful shops and buy beautiful looking things like pendulums and then have no idea what to do with them. So Hayden's going to teach you exactly how to work with your pendulum. He's going to go through all the different types of pendulums and Hayden actually does some really, really cool things with his pendulum. He can teach you how to um, how to even check in with your chakras using your pendulum. He can check in with how calcified your pineal gland is using his pendulum. So super, super interesting. And as well, we he goes through how to use your own body as a pendulum. So again, tuning into your own intuition and using your body to help you make sort of yes or no decisions because the body always knows before the mind. Oh, where's the last slide? There's one more slide. <laughs> I can't find it. But in the last slide, <laughs> and in week 10, we will be going through, um, I might just stop this screen share because it's not working for me. Um, give me two seconds. Okay, so in the last week, we will go into more depth of the empath abilities and how to really start utilizing that to be that trained empath, as well as how to start reading people. So, so in week 10, I will actually get you to start reading people using that empathic gift. And you will be so amazed at what will come through and how how you can access this this knowledge it really sort of helps you understand that oneness that we all have so that is the course so the course is priced only at, at only 190 dollars for the 10 weeks so sign up while it's so cheap because it's definitely going to go up in price as as we offer more courses 